Hey, you all, update on my collars. You know, I planted my collars, what, like a, what, about a week ago? Look at these little collar seeds in a container. Ooh, look at here. They are growing, oh God. <laughs> I have so many collars. I plant a lot of seeds because I didn't know if I was gonna have uh, collars to come up like this. But oh my goodness, these are a lot, a lot of collars. Okay, just an update on my collars. They came, they started before anything. Okay, so these are the collars. Look at my collars. They growing. I got so many collars, I don't know what I'm gonna do with them. Many plants to plant. Okay. Look at my squash. Remember, these were from uh, seeds, you all. Squash here. This right here is okra. So that's squash. Ooh, let's see. That was a squash seeds. Squash. <laughs> Got one there that's coming up. And let's see. Let's see. That's why you label your thing. That squash. Squash in here. This right here is squash. Let's get it. Good. This one here. Yeah, 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 with my hands. That squash there. This here's my okra. This is okra. Okay. Guess what? My cilantro is coming up. Remember, I didn't have any up the other day. Some there. Some in this cup. Look. Oh, wait a minute. Cilantro here. The Let's move. Three. Got three or four. Well, I would say these. Here are cilantro. Oh, four of them. I don't have four of them. Here, see they're coming up from seeds? And they're very hard to plant from seeds, you all. But well, these are coming up. Looking good. Beef steak tomatoes. That's what these are. I got my little labels on the outside here. Beef steak tomatoes, either way you turn it. Cabbage, I don't see any cabbage. Well, there's one, I think there's one cabbage. This here is beef steak tomatoes too, in this little container. I already showed you my uh, squash. These are my carrots on this end. On the other end, I spoke. Supposed to be bunching the onions. I don't see those up yet. I might have had a little bit too much soil on top. So I did remove some of my soil. But guess what? I have bunching onions here. And guess what? Let's see. See? They've been, they're beginning to come up. One there and one here. Got some sweet peppers. Don't see them yet. So right now, no sweet peppers in here yet. And what's this one here? This is another kind of pepper. Pepo cabana leo. Cabano. I don't know what it is. None of that is coming up yet. So I got one, two, Three, no, three, three areas. I think they don't have anything in them coming up yet. But just look at this. Remember all this was coming from soil. I mean, excuse me, remember all this was coming from seeds. I planted all these from seeds. All oh, from seeds. Mm -hmm. I like what I see. I 
no cigarette butt. Talk with you later. Okay, you all. I'm taking the video of the progress. If I don't hurt myself. Of. Some of my plants. Got some carrots here. Onion here. I got a couple onions coming there. This is my cilantro here. I got like four of those. That cilantro, this cilantro. This right here is my sweet, some sweet peppers. Sweet peppers right here. Right here is my beef steak. Uh-oh. No, pepper, this is another pepper here different kind of pepper here I got a cabbage coming up there oh this is my squash there's squash here I have some okra whole container of uh, collards Right here, here's some more uh, squash. That's squash. This is cilantro. You know, people say it's very hard to grow, but I've been, I don't know, fortunate, I guess, to be able to grow some. Because they were saying soak seeds and all that kind of stuff. I didn't do any kind of soaking seeds or anything. I just planted it and uh, it grew. This is beef steak tomatoes here beef steak tomatoes and these are my cilantro I got like four of those you know I love cilantro as you look at some of my videos I tell you about how I love cilantro so I got four of them four together one two three four and these are the funny kind of carrots you all they have like fat and round carrots they remind, they remind me of beets. Never tried those before. I have some onions here. These are supposed to be spring onions. I don't know how they're going to do. But they're up. I've never tried them in a cup before. So I have to see how they do. Course, you know with anything you can have maybe a couple cups so with something didn't come up they got yeah a little disappointing there's an onion here right there and there's one here two oh there's three three onions there's another onion right there But you can also see a bunch of orange pillings out here, you all. This is to help control insects and also so I won't have to worry about the cat jumping up, messing with my plants. You know, they don't like stuff like that. This helps control insects too. Insects. So this works pretty good. That's why you see these, uh, 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 that's why you see these orange pillings all over my table and sometimes I put like one or two on the side of uh, my uh, vegetables here. But they're, they're getting ready, getting right. Look at this squash, how big it's getting. I want the plants to get a lot bigger because if they get bigger, then I have a better chance of them uh, 
making it out there in the ground. The weather's so changeable, you never know. Warm and then it's cold and hot and everything else. It's just, you know, the weather's just so unpredictable. So I'm trying to have the best outcome as possible. And the bigger my plants get, the better it is. So the squash is gonna, I'm gonna let it get a little bigger. But I gotta also to be cautious of the size because if it gets too big and it hasn't taken root, don't take root real quick when I put it out there in the garden, then the wind or whatever, you know, we have winds blowing. You never know when the wind is gonna get up to like about 20, 30 miles per hour, then it's gonna break them. So it's sort of like a delicate, you know, balance. Okay. Okay, you all, I am back. This is um Evelyn. Um, this is just an update on my ceilings for my vegetable garden. Look at the progress. Okay, these are my collars. Look at the collars. Uh, look at my squash. These are gonna have to be transplanted for most of these. So these are my squash here. I got squash here, these are squash here. These are okra, okra here. My okra here. This is cilantro. I got about four containers of that. Uh, you know those, because they look the, the same. Move the trays around a little bit. Okay, four trays of that. Four right here. One, two, three, four. Okay, this tray here. I have some peppers. This tray here I also have some sweet pepper, cardamom, part of yeah, part of there, cardamom, uh, peppers. These are onions, spring onions, in this tray here. We didn't do that well. I have beef steak tomatoes. That's what these are. Yeah, beef steak tomatoes. These are carrots right here. Here I have some onions coming up, but I don't know exactly what happened with these right here. Those are onions. There's one there. There's one over a little corner there. I think maybe they're still trying to come up. Disappointment was my cabbage. Not too sure what I'm gonna do about that. Cause I had one little cabbage seed there, but it, for some reason, I don't know if the seeds were old or what. The cabbage just didn't do that well. I might try to see if I can replant those. I'm not too sure. But overall, I'm pretty happy with uh, the vegetable that I have uh, grown. Uh, got some yelling there on my um, squash. I'm gonna need to get them in the ground, in the real ground. Um, they are probably not draining properly either. Okay. Of course, we need to cut the grass too. <laughs> but we're not talking about the grass, we're talking about really like weeds out there. We're talking about these plants. I will soon have some collars here. These collars are about to get right too. The collars, okay. They're getting big too. I got so many collars in here. I didn't know they were gonna come up like this. I don't know what I'm gonna do with some of them because I, I won't have enough room to transplant all of them. Some of them I might have to leave in bunches, but if I leave them in bunches, of course, you know, they're not gonna produce like they should. But I really don't want to throw them away. I really don't. So we'll see. Okay, you all, look at my vegetables. Remember, these are the same vegetables I planted. These, all these vegetables came from seeds. Look at all these collars. 
These are my squash. I gotta get them in the ground. I'm getting ready to put some in the ground now. As you can see, I think they will time for them to be put in the ground. Got some yellow leaves there too. Right here, these are okra. Got okra coming in. I mean, you got okra. How big they are. All these right here, these are okra. Whole big tray of them. Oh, can't lift that tray. The tray is heavy. Well, here it is. But the tray is heavy. Whole big container of collards. All of these are collards. All of these. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm, I got too many collard plants. And of course, you know, I'm going to transplant all of these eventually in my garden. But right now, I'm not going to do any collars. I'm just going to do squash today. So, these are my squash. And these are the ones I will be transplanting in the garden. These squash. Or well, someone said squash. Or these squash. Got some more here. These here squash too. Of course, these are sweet. Cardivan, uh, cardiva pepper. So those are peppers. Ooh, I got my hands in the way, I think. Uh -oh. <laughs> those are peppers. Hope you see my squash, because I realized I had my hands in the way. This rest is my squash here. And these are some peppers. These are peppers too, they're different, a different type. Like uh, Cabala, Cabela peppers. Different type here. These are these are onions. I know it might look weird, but these are little onions. These are beef steak tomatoes. Beef steak tomatoes. These four containers here, you all. This is my cilantro. And I'm, I remember reading about this and people were saying that it's hard to grow these from seeds. Look at mine. I got four trays of them. I was just so proud of myself to be, to be able to grow them from seeds. Some more beef tomatoes. Beef steak tomatoes in this cup here. Here, these are carrots. Those funny looking carrots. These aren't the long carrots. These are the funny, funny carrots that uh, they're like a bowl. Remind me of like of a turnip. Look almost like a turnip. Of course, that was a cabbage seed there. I don't know what's going on with it. It's on the side and it's not really doing what it should be. Here, these were supposed to be some more onions. I don't know what happened to the onion, you all. I had to plant those in, in the ground. Here, believe it or not, these are cabbage in it. And they are coming up. So those are cabbage that are coming up. I don't know, but that little one is over there by itself, like it's just laying over. But these are cabbage. Cabbage seeds. Okay. Okay. I will tell you, you all, in my garden. I have a few peppers, bell peppers, the red pepper, the green pepper, the yellow pepper. I have one big tomato. I might be a beef steak tomato. I'm not too sure exactly what it is now, but I have the stick there. I have what, um, two bunches of cam chamomile, a bunch of basil, sweet basil, a bunch of Thai, Thai basil, a bunch of rosemary, a bunch of just these are bunches, just you know, just one, you know, just one bunch. Uh, spearmint. Uh, what else I got? I got one more off there. Oh, oh, I got lavender out there. I got lavender out there. 
but what I'm, I'm just trying to tell you all that those plants are expensive. It's better to grow your own. Because with those plants out there that I got out there in the garden, those plants probably cost about, mm, not too sure how much they cost then. My husband paid for them. But uh, I think those plants cost about, about 50 or $60, those plants. Because let me tell you the thing about these plants then. When you go to stores, it doesn't matter where you go. You can go to uh, Home Depot. You can go to Lowe's. Even places like Food Line there and Roses and Walmart, they're high too. Uh, those plants usually cost about 4 and $5 for plants you know and you used to get quite a bit in a tray for four or five dollars but it doesn't happen that way anymore so it, it, it really costs us. it really costs you so it's better to grow your plants from seeds it's better to grow from seedlings it really is it's a lot cheaper a lot of times you get these seeds on say for like a dollar pack you know, especially you can get them like off season or something like that. You can go to different places and get it. Get them. You know, you can get them from the Dollar Tree. They might have one price on the Dollar Tree. I got a lot from the Dollar Tree. I'm just be frank with you. The Dollar Tree, where, where the seeds cost a dollar, might be like two dollars or two two ninety nine or something like that on the pack of the seeds. Most of my seeds, I'm gonna be frank with you, they came from the Dollar Tree, which costs a dollar per package. And they are good seeds, because you see what I have out here. And they also have a date on them, on the back of them, I think, used by a certain date or something like that. So you can really save money. You can take about 10 or $15, and you can get about 15 packs of different seeds, including flowers, too, you all. Just thought I would throw that in. It's just a, just a little hint, hint, if you want to save money, or unless you want to go to the store, like, like Lowe's or... Home Depot or Roses or Walmart and pay all this money for these plants. And it makes you feel good too when you can grow it yourself. You know, your little hands, your little fingers did it. Grow something that you're going to eat. So you're getting the, the benefits and the rewards. Okay. Okay. Let's get ready uh, to plant some of this squash. Let's go get everything set up out here in my garden. We can get it planted. Also, I've already uh, done my rows. I redone my rows because I needed more rows, garden rows, you know, to put my uh, vegetables in. Also, I've already uh, made my got my soil mixture together, Miracle Grow, you know, uh, soil mixture. And, you know, of course, you got to have the potting soil too, and you got to have the in ground uh, soil mixed together. Whenever you're doing this, you all, I, I would advise you, always make sure you use some type of potting soil. The Miracle Grow is, it is a good potting soil that you mix also with the in-ground soil because it will keep it nice and moist and soft and it won't be hard. And also too, once you get your flowers in the ground, excuse me, once you get your uh, plants, vegetable plants in the ground, also flowers too, but now we're talking about vegetable plants, make sure you uh, uh, keep that top soft. You know me. I mean, I've used that the hole in the the shovel so many years, so I know how to just take that and and and, and soften up my top. You know, to make sure my soil is uh, soft. When I go out in my garden, you'll probably see some of uh, uh, the vegetables, my peppers, and my herbs, and my tomato plants that I one tomato plant that I have out in the garden, and you'll see how the soil looks around those items. So uh, you know. Just make sure you, you know, you you prep your your soil good, you know, your plants good. Okay, let's get started. Talk to you when I get everything set up. I am out here in my garden. The sun is out really bright. So I hope you can still see this here. I am gonna show you these are the plants that I bought from the store. Before I realized they was just elacious, you know, cost so much. 
while I was like waiting a little bit on my C's to get started on my C's. I said, you know, I'll just go ahead and uh, um, buy a few things from the store. These are peppers. I got red peppers, green peppers. I think I got a yellow pepper and I got banana peppers. Those are the peppers. Okay. This is my one tomato plant. Said I wasn't too sure what it was. It's a big boy. It's called a big boy tomato plant. Okay, can't stick that back in there. Big boy tomato plant. And these are my herbs. That's my spearmint. Uh, got my shadow in. That's my rosemary. What is this here? Oh, I got a, pur a purple cone flower. This is a purple cone flower. This is Thai basil, sweet basil. You see my shadow, I don't care. Uh, Greek oregano, that's one I couldn't think about, think of. Both of these here are calamine. Cause I'm drinking me some tea and stuff. And let me show you about to fall out here. What's wrong with me today? Let me show you my lavender. Just one, two, three, four. Got four lavenders. Just, just like I stated you all, these plants, it's a total of 20 plants. Got a strawberry plant on here, but that one came back from last year. Cost me what cost my husband, like he paid for. I uh, can't exactly think of the, the number, but I, I want to say it was close to $60 compared to getting these seeds from like Dollar Tree, a dollar a pack, you all. If you're gonna have installed your garden and want to do a late garden, go to Dollar Tree, get you some little trays and plant your seeds. You save a lot of money that way. Because the thing about doing a garden, you want a garden to be affordable. Affordable. And I had to see what was really out there too, because I can't tell you about gardening, gardening if I don't know what the prices are out there. And let you know that it is better to, uh, it is better to grow your uh, uh, vegetables and things from seeds because gardening is a hobby and I love it. And I want you all, for the ones that are interested in it, to love it too. But you can you can love it only if it's affordable. And it's affordable because if you go to like the Dollar Tree, somewhere like that and get your seeds for a dollar, then when it comes to getting your in-ground soil and your potting soil, see what I'm saying? And Lowe's and I think Home Depot about the same with the, when it comes to the soil, the ingrown, uh, in-ground use uh, for the soil, you know, for outdoors, and the potting soil. I think their prices are close there together. So remember, you know, when you get that potting soil, you don't have to use, get a lot. I would say if you're trying to start a garden from scratch and you never even done anything, you're cutting away the grass and getting your and, and getting ready to start a, a, a garden with which you would have you would need to use a tiller, then that would be your most expensive thing as far as um adding soil to it, you know, in-ground soil or you know in potting soil. But once you get that, as they say, the foundation and get it established, like my garden is out here, then see you don't have to buy a lot of potting soil and, and, and stuff. My purpose of this main, I'm gonna put this around my plants. So it's not gonna be that expensive. I'm gonna put it around my plant. 
because I still have my regular soil to help my plant. But this is just some that extra something, something, you know, it needs, you know, that little extra boost. It needs. And don't forget, you know, once you get your get, get once you get once you get your plants in ground, don't forget about the miracle growth uh spray. And it's the granulars. You can use the granulars. And maybe other things if you want to too, but I, I know that works. To feed your plants. You want to feed your plants. You see some, uh, hmm, as they say. You see my, that's my grapevine that you see here. This is my grapevine. It came back. And it was a grapevine that I got from the store. And it was dying. And I had, well, I had it a few years now. Not that many years. Okay, I'm gonna get started now. To enough talking. Okay, we're gonna get started. Okay. I'm out here in my garden. Okay, let's get started. Okay. Okay. Hmm, can you see all what I'm doing? Can you? You start on that first one, you think? You might can't see it on the first one. But you'll catch me on the next one. I can't see him on the first one, what I'm exactly doing, but you'll get, catch me down here on the second one, you should. Okay, let's get the first one done. I don't think you're gonna be able to see me that good. Ground is good and moist. Okay. Try to break them apart. Don't tear them up. And get one down. Got my soil here. Got my first one in. And not too sure. Ooh. Okay, you probably see my body in here. Okay, I had to apologize ahead of time. You don't want to see it, don't look. Okay. See? Pull it out of the pocket. Pull it out of the uh, bucket container. That's what you got here. Get it in the ground. Take your soil. Make your little well in here. I want to talk loud so you can hear me. Soil around the plant. Okay. This glass is gonna be a nuisance. I see that name. Okay, going down the rope here. On and on my body. Let's see what I'm doing out here. Down the road. More on the row.
Okay. Step back a little bit to be able to see this rough because that's important. Just middle of that row, plants. Trying to get past that pole. Got a pole here I'm trying to get past. Again. Deep little well here. Best to scratch it out with your hand. This one came out good. It didn't give me a fit. Put some soil in there. Sure it's deep enough, because you want the root of the plants you are to be on the ground. Top. Don't worry about the little soil that's going to be on it. It's not important. Your concern is the root system. It's your concern. This, as you can see, this is nice and moist, you all. Nice and moist. You gotta keep it nice and moist. Look at that. I'll separate from the other. It's nice and moist. Now we're gonna put it in here. Dug my little well. Push it down a little, but be careful how you push it down because uh, 
you don't want um, so you might could have been a little far before. That's how you push it on because you don't want to break your root system. But you want to make it so it won't fall over. You want to make sure that it dirt. Like a, you, you want to make sure it's sort of like slug, snug, snug like in a bug, like in a big, you know. If they say, uh, snug is a bug, snug in a bug, snug in a rug. You just, you just want to make sure that dirt is hugging this plant. Get my other pot over here. I'm gonna run out of soil. I just try to get more soil too. Squash here. This dirt is you all. It's it's it's, it's not bad. It's not bad. There's all the nutrients and stuff that it needs right here. So we want to get this good combination, get it started. It's like anything, you know, you're going to have to feed it so, some kind of plant food, whatever kind you want to use, you can. What you can do, I know when I was growing up, we use a, a little thing we call a PEG, a PEG, and I think you can buy them out of the store or you can make your own one. It's just a little piece of wood that has a point to it, a point on it, and you can put that somewhere near your plant but not to the root system. To uh, and what happens with that is when you order, what happens with that is when you water your plants right, instead of your water going all over the place, it'll be seeping down to your plant. Because my thing is when I'm doing a garden, I, it's okay to use a sprinkler system. There's nothing wrong with that. And you know, the little sprinkler of, uh, of apparatus that goes back and forth, forth and water your garden for you. The only thing about that is that why it's growing your plants is also is going to be growing uh, growing uh, weeds too and I like to work smarter not harder 
So I, 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 I usually don't have a lot of weeds in my garden because I don't do it that way. Now, if you're gonna have a big garden, I don't know, you know, if you don't have anyone to help you, you might want to do the sprinkler system, but just be aware that you're gonna need to do some chopping some grass. I wouldn't say use a uh, spray, uh, something in your garden out here to control weeds by, you know, be, because you're gonna eat this food. It's all right to spray around the edges of the garden. That's what I, you know, what I'm gonna do here a little bit. And that's on the outside of the fence because I don't want grass growing, trying to grow from the outside inside my fence. But for us putting a uh, weed killer on in your garden, where you got to eat, you know, once these vegetables and stuff get ripe and stuff and start producing, I would not have advised that. So not, I, I would have advised against that. Because you could probably end up poisoning yourself or killing yourself, you know. I'm out of soil. So I'm going to put some more soil mixture. Okay, four, five, six, four, five, six, six. Quite a few more plants in here. Okay, I'm going to put some more soil I'm not going to bore you with uh, showing you how I plant all of my, all of my plants. Go get some more soil. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just go ahead and finish up these squash, putting these squash out. But you have an idea how to plant it and what it should look like. And also, too, when the sun goes down this afternoon, I'm going to water uh, these plants some more. Like I say, you know, the, the, the plants that I got out, my plants, they've, they've already been watered. It was watered last night. So the, the soil is good and moist around those plants. So the sun shouldn't cook them. They, they have water in them. So uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to just go ahead and finish putting the squash out. But you have an idea of how you should uh, plant your squash. This is with any vegetable. You are. I don't want to bore you with it. But it takes a little, little work. But if you prep your gar re garden real good, year after year, it gets easier and easier. So I'm gonna put these here out and, you know, just keep them water. I will say again, like I've always said, please do not water your plants when the sun is out. If you are wait too long to water them, then do not try to water them midday and all of that because they're gonna die. The sun is gonna cook them. You can count on that. It's not gonna work for you. But gardening is very therapeutic. You know, right along with other things, but I just like to, you know, see things grow. And also, I enjoy and love to grow my own food too, as much as I can grow. But okay, I'm going to continue putting out these squash, and I will show you the end results. Talk with you later. Okay, I just got through planting or transplanting my squash. I have almost two whole rows of squash. 
bugs are off of here today. Uh, see the ones, the rows with the like the dark, the, if you look at the rows with the dark soil around them, those are the squash. Got almost two rows. Go all the way down, come back up. On the end, that's that tomato plant on that end there. So, let's get a close-up view of it. Skip a row in between there. Um, squash usually gets pretty big. I have so many things to put in my garden this year. <laughs> to, uh, I had no idea. Well, I didn't know my squash plants were gonna do that good. These squash plants, I got them from Dollar Tree, and I had no idea they were do were gonna do this good. Produce all of these squash plants. I was gonna not use some of them and I hated not to use them so I decided to use them all. I might be able, be able to find another area in my yard to put some other things that I don't have room for to put in this garden. Because I just hated, you know, not to use them. And I don't know anyone that wanted squash plants. And they were ready to be transplanted. Okay looking good like I stated uh, these they were, were watered last night so before I took them out of the little trays they were well hydrated it was well hydrated in the little trays but this late this afternoon when the Sun goes down I will water them again and I did tell you all about the little uh, peg apparatus and it's just like a little uh, piece of wooden stick that has a hole, I mean that you stick stick it in the ground near your plants, but not at the root system. And this will help the water go, stay, go to the root system instead of just running all over the place. You know how water like to run all over the place when you try to water your plants? This will um, help that. Okay, might be a little too close. I have to see because they're, I'm starting the garden sort of late because of the weather. Some people I think they did okay. Some of the things survived, depends on what you plant it. So I'm not too sure how big the squash is gonna get. So some of the things might be a little close here. But overall, I'm happy with it. Looks good. It's coming along. Now, probably the next thing I will probably put out will probably be the okra or either the collards or both. Because they, they are getting of size now, okra and collards. They're getting to be pretty good size. Maybe in the next couple weeks. I thought maybe I might have a couple weeks on this squash. But. Mm, I say okay no it's time to get them out here do have one that I do have a few that are smaller than uh, some of the others hopefully they will catch on and go ahead and grow I hope I know I had some small ones last year and they wasn't didn't get that big but they did produce squash and that was really interesting so if you look back at my videos on my squash you will see how I was talking about how one small plant had squash on the vine. And it was amazing how the squash was pretty big and the little vine was small. But okay, okay, with well this is my squash. Just got through planting. So now in my garden, I got squash right along with my peppers and my herbs. Got all of that herbs and my lavender, yeah. I guess the lavender's herb too, isn't it? Oh, anyway, I'm gonna enjoy all of that. I got plans for all this stuff, all of it. I, I just love cooking different stuff. Maybe I can 
put different things in season in my vegetables. Since I'm gonna try to eat more vegetables here. Fill myself up, try to get some of these pounds off. Okay. But I'm not gonna stop eating meat though. Okay. Well, I hope these garden tips have enlightened you on gardening. I hope you got something from this little segment. If you did, please like, comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel, Evelyn H. Ball. Okay, I will talk with you later. Bye.